Tonight, we are very pleased to announce that Xbox 360 will be backwards compatible with the top-selling Xbox games. So that brings us to Xbox 360. In 2005, when the Xbox 360 was first announced, Robbie Buck, chief Xbox officer, said it would be backward compatible with original Xbox games. I remember the roar in the crowd as everyone cheered. Microsoft supported backward compatibility from launch all the way up to 2007, in the end supporting almost 500 games, more than half of the total North American Xbox original library. To be honest, I wasn't a huge user of backward compatibility on the Xbox 360. I mean, there were so many amazing games for the 360, it was hard to look back. But I always took a look at the updates to see what new games were available for it. Backward compatibility was a very hot topic in the mid-2000s. The PlayStation 3 was backward compatible with the PlayStation 2, simply because it had PS2 hardware chips installed on the motherboard. Later model PS3s had that feature removed because Sony claimed that 80 or 90% of users didn't really care about playing PS2 games and Sony removed that feature in later versions of the console. Unlike the PlayStation 2 backward compatibility on the PlayStation 3, Xbox backward compatibility is performed in software. Microsoft has always been tight-lipped about backward compatibility on the Xbox 360, but it is assumed that it was using some type of dynamic recompilation or Dynarec if you're familiar with emulators, as well as high-level emulation techniques to intercept Xbox calls and replace them with the Xbox 360 equivalents. Backward compatibility is a very impressive feat especially when you consider there still isn't a working Xbox emulator for the PC. Just how impressive? Well, apart from the branding, the Xbox Original and Xbox 360 have zero in common with each other. Let's recap the hardware specs. The original Xbox has a 733 MHz 32-bit x86 based Celeron chip with one hardware thread, while the Xbox 360 has a 6 hardware thread 64-bit PowerPC CPU running at 3.2 GHz. The original Xbox is rocking a NVIDIA CPU, the NV2A, running at 233 MHz, while the 360 has a 500 MHz ATI custom chip with 10 MB of super-fast ED RAM. 64 MB of DDR RAM make up the original Xbox and 512 MB of DDR3 for the Xbox 360. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are more specs of course, but Microsoft moved away from x86 to a completely new architecture. So let's revisit backward compatibility on an Xbox 360. For this, we will be using a late model Xbox 360 from 2014. This is a special edition model with a 500 gigabyte hard drive and one of the last 360s to be released. Of course, you can use any Xbox 360 that you like, all the way down to an original Xenon model from 2005, as long as you have a hard drive installed. To be sure that you have the latest backward compatibility update revision, go into the System Settings menu and select Console Settings, and then scroll all the way down to System Info. The backward compatibility update is identified by the letters BK and then the version number. If you have 1888, you are all updated and ready to go. So simply put any game from Microsoft's backward compatibility list into the Xbox 360 and play them as you normally would. I tested out a couple including the very excellent Project Gotham Racing by Bizarre Creations, Quantum Redshift a very good Wipeout style game from Microsoft, and of course, one of my favorite games ever, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. What an absolute classic. So as you can see, backward compatibility works very well. I'm not going to claim it's perfection on all 400 plus something titles, but it's very impressive. 
It even supported multiplayer via Xbox Live, which unfortunately was discontinued by Microsoft in 2010. So how does it perform side by side with an original Xbox? Well let's test it out with Jet Set Radio Future, one of my all time favourite games. For this I'm using HDMI output from the Xbox 360 and Microsoft component cables out of the original Xbox. As you can see the graphics and sound is on point with the original. The Xbox 360 version does drop a frame or two and it does begin to go out of sync with the Xbox original but you can hardly notice. The color palette is perfect too. Overall I would say this is a very impressive effort. Backward compatibility works and it works very well. And as someone who has coded emulators in the past, I've always wondered how this was achieved. It seems almost unbelievable in so many ways that this is actually real. Let's take a closer look at how this all came to be. The first clues I found was by an individual by the name of Michael Brundage. Michael Brundage was part of the original development team for backward compatibility and his blog provides some more clues as to how the Xbox 360 was able to be backward compatible with Xbox original software. Michael's blog confirms backward compatibility is simply running emulation and how it was the hardest technical challenge of his career. It also gives us some clues about how the emulator works including the name called Zifu. Originally the emulator was to be called Fusion but the team was asked to pick another name so they shortened it to Fu or Fu. The XE was a common prefix added to a name in Xbox 360 development. Okay, some interesting stuff there but certainly not earth shattering. What's more interesting however is another man on the backward compatibility team, Victor Tan. He was responsible for the CPU and in 2005 filed two patents that are clearly used in the Zifu emulator. Here's what they are. Function level just in time translation engine with multiple pass optimization and selective omission of Endian translation to enhance emulator performance. What a mouthful that is, but here's what they mean. If we think about an emulator, there's usually two types of processing, interpreter and dynamic recompilation. An interpreter simply follows the execution of the code, decodes the next instruction and applies an equivalent operation on the host processor. When you have an emulator that uses a dynamic recompiler or Dynarec, the code translates individual instructions from the source system to the host. In this case from x86 to PowerPC, these translated instructions live in a cache and are executed as a block of instructions. This is a very simple explanation and it's a little more complicated, but the process where already translated instructions are executed in memory is why a Dynarec based emulator is the best option for fast emulation. Victor Tan's just-in-time translation engine patent talks about a dynamic recompiler not at the instruction level but at the function level. In other words, each individual function in an original Xbox game is translated to PowerPC native code stored in the Xbox 360's memory space and executed many times as needed. He also talks about multipass optimization. This pattern is a fascinating read and gives us some insight to the challenge the backward compatibility team had and how they were able to conquer it. Victor Tan's second pattern is equally important. It talks about how optimization of data is stored on the PowerPC architecture. x86 is a little Endian architecture and PowerPC is a big Endian architecture. The best way to explain this is, if you store hex number 1234 in an original Xbox in memory and then the same number in the Xbox 360's memory space, when you attempt to retrieve this number with 16 bits or 2 bytes, 
on the Xbox 360, you'll return 1234 hexadecimal as expected, but on the original Xbox, the number comes back as hexadecimal 3412. Therefore, for backward compatibility, there is also a process where data must be converted from little endian format to big endian format that the Xbox 360 expects. His patent talks about how he optimizes this by emitting conversions of certain numbers that are known to not require conversion at all. For example, hexadecimal 0000 will still be 0000, as would 0101 or 1010 would convert to Big Endian and be retrieved as the same number. So with these two ideas and the multi-threaded performance of the Xbox 360 with its six hardware threads, its DirectX 9 capabilities and pixel shaders, the backward compatibility team was able to achieve the unimaginable, emulation at a very high level of performance. So eventually you are going to put an original Xbox disc in the drive and it will pop up a message like this that the game is not supported. So how can it tell which games it can run and which ones it won't support? Well it all has to do with title IDs. Each Xbox game has an individual title ID that uniquely identifies the game. For example, Grand Theft Auto 3 North American version has the ID 545-4000E. So the way that backward compatibility works is when you install an original Xbox game into the 360's DVD drive, the title ID of the original Xbox game is checked against the database of compatible Xbox original games that backward compatibility supports and if it finds a match then a region check is performed to determine if the game is in the same region as the Xbox 360 that you're running in and if that's a match then the emulator is launched and the original Xbox game is run via backward compatibility. So the obvious question now becomes, well, what if there's a way to circumvent or bypass that title ID check and then allow you to run any original Xbox game that you want to, opening up the door for the complete set of original Xbox games running on your Xbox 360? Well, the answer is it's already been done. And if you have a modified Xbox 360 via RGH or JTAG, you're in luck. I'm going to show you how to install a hacked version of the Xbox emulator and play any game that you want to via backward compatibility. Let's take a look. So first things first, in order to do this you need a JTAG or an RGH modded Xbox 360. What you need to do is download two files. One of them is called HDD Compatibility Partition Fixer and the other is the hacked emulator files. Just Google both of them, they are very easy to find. Of course, I'll leave links in the description below if you get stuck. Once you've downloaded both files, extract them onto a USB stick, which we will then in turn use on our modded Xbox 360. The HDD compatibility fixer is optional but important. Here's how it works. The Zifu emulator is installed on the Xbox 360's hard drive under Partition 2, or if you are running Freestyle Dash, it's called HDDX. If you are able to access your Partition 2 or your HDDX partition, then nothing else is needed. However, if you don't see it, then you do need to run the HDD compatibility fixer to create the partition so that the backward compatibility can work. To do this, just locate the HDD compatibility fixer on the USB stick and execute default.xex. Since I already have a compatibility partition, I'm not going to create my own. However, all you need to do is press the A button and that will generate the partition 2 ready for backward compatibility. Now go ahead and copy the folder called Compatibility to Partition 2 or HDDX on your Xbox's hard drive. 
Make sure the folder called compatibility is included with the files that you copy over. Now with file manager, select compatibility and make sure the files on the hard drive of the Xbox match the files that you copied over from the USB stick. If it looks something like this, you're good to go. Now remember I previously said that the emulator was called Zifu. Here's the executable and if I run it, you can see it's trying to load an original Xbox game, but of course there's no disk in the drive, so we can't do anything. So now that we are all set up, let's go ahead and run some games that aren't part of the official compatibility list and see how well they perform. Crazy Taxi 3 runs very well, however the speech in the game is loud and reverberated. Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Collection runs great. I can't find any issues with this one at all. Not really sure why it didn't make the official cut. Ah, Rally Sport Challenge 2. This has to be one of my favorite racing games on the original Xbox. This one runs great, however, there are some texture issues around the car as you can probably see. Metal Gear Solid 2 works very well. The only thing I've noticed is on the tanker level when you're outside in the rain, it runs a little sluggish, but once you get inside the tanker, it's perfectly smooth. Togi 2 from Sega and From Software runs exceptionally well, no issues that I can see so far, and what a great game this is. It's not all good stuff however, a few titles I tried did not work at all. One of my all time favourites, Midtown Madness 3, just reboots my Xbox 360. That's a bummer. Still, I can bust out the original OG Xbox and play it from there. So in conclusion, it's clear that Microsoft wanted perfection or close to it if they were going to accept a game to be a part of the official backward compatibility list. As we've seen with many of the games not on the list, they do run very well. However, there's usually one or more issues that hold it back from making the cut. Still, if you do have a modified Xbox 360, it's definitely worth checking out the modified backward compatibility files that I'm using here as there's more than a good chance that your favorite games not on the compatibility list will be able to be played, and pretty well I might add. Well that's all for this video guys, let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Well, there I am. Conquer the king. King of all the lamb. Who'd have thought that? But how did I come to this, I hear you say? And who are those strange fellows that surround my throne? I hear you also say. Well, it's a long story. Come closer and I'll tell you. It all started yesterday. And what a day that was. It's what I call a bad fur day. <laughs>